Welcome to another Three and Out presented by Comerica. I'm Danny Rogers, and we're talking the biggest headlines, top three headlines for week three. Lions hosting the Baltimore Ravens, and what better point of view to get than the oppositions? Cue Garrett Downing, Ravens reporter. Garrett, we're going to talk about Lamar's playmaking ability, that continued success in the run game, and of course, the matchup versus tight end TJ Hawkinson. But I want to start with Lamar's continued improvement and his playmaking abilities. He's one of the most dynamic players in the NFL, if not the most dynamic. And I know this Lions defense is cranking away, trying to attempt to slow him down in the game plan um, coming up this week. So, Garrett, how has he continued to grow in his game so far this season? Yeah, I think one thing that Lamar really went to work on this offseason was working on kind of the simple things, the fundamentals. That was really a focus of his over the course of offseason practices, OTAs, mini camp, training camp. And I think we've seen a big improvement in terms of the way that he's throwing the football. He's throwing a better spiral, he says, than he ever has during his time in the NFL. And then the other part of it, too, is over the course of training camp, the Ravens really didn't have any time that Lamar and his top receivers were on the field at the same time. Hardly any. Hollywood Brown missed basically all of training camp. Sammy Watkins missed some time during training camp. So I think that there was a lot of uncertainty going into these first couple of games about where the passing game would be. The Ravens did try to put some new weapons around Lamar this year, and it's been pretty good so far. Hollywood Brown's off to a strong start. Sammy Watkins has made his impact felt over these first couple of games. And then the other factor with Lamar is just the X factor. Like anyone who watched the game Sunday night against the Chiefs saw that. He basically took over the game in the second half and just had the attitude that you're not stopping me and I'm getting a first down on fourth and one to seal the game. And I'm leading the team back down, uh, down 11 points late in the second half and winning this game, kind of willing the team to victory. And so you can talk about all these different X's and O's and, and I'm sure we'll talk about all that. But at the end of the day, it just seemed like he has that playmaking ability to put the team on his back and then carry them to a victory. Yeah, talking about that Sunday night game and everyone saw head coach John Harbaugh look at Lamar and ask him if he wanted to go for it. And I think that just speaks to so much of his character um, and, and listening to the rumblings inside of Baltimore. I've heard that Lamar just works his behind off. So what can you speak to his work ethic and his, his leadership over there with the Ravens? Yeah, Lamar definitely works hard. I mean, this is one of the most competitive guys that I've ever been around. And that's really what stands out to me. I think his competitive energy and fire spreads throughout the entire team. And you can see that in moments like that. I mean, there's probably been a dozen times since he's been here when there's been a fourth down example where he's waved off the kicking team or he's told John Harbaugh that he wants to go for it. And oftentimes uh, Harbaugh listens to him and, and trusts him and the rest of the team to go get that fourth down. And so that competitive energy it, it definitely kind of sets the tone uh, for the team. And then the other part of it is just he has fun playing the game. Sunday night, going back to that, he scored a touchdown, flipped into to the end zone. I mean, that's just the kind of play that you would see from a kid out there on the playground. And Alejandro Villanueva, the Ravens offensive tackle, veteran guy who's been in the league for a long time, came here from Pittsburgh. He talked uh, just, you know, kind of about being around Lamar and how he has that energy and how it's fun to be around him. Um, and so I think that that's kind of the thing that stands out with this team. Um, Lamar's competitive fire, that energy, and then also the way that he has fun playing the game and everyone can feel that out there on the field. Secondly, let's talk that continued success in the run game. Offensive coordinator Greg Roman is in his third season with Baltimore, but he knows that Harbaugh family well. He was in San Fran and at Stanford with Jim Harbaugh. And the last two seasons, the Ravens have led the ground game and yards per game in 2019 and 2020. So what is Coach Roman's philosophy to continue that success on the ground? Yeah, the thing with the Ravens that's really impressive in terms of their ability to run the ball is that over the course of the final two weeks before the regular season, they lost their top three running backs. J.K. Dobbins, Gus Edwards, Justice Hill were all lost with season-ending injuries. So I think everyone kind of says, all right, are they going to be able to run the football? They've got Tyson Williams as the top running back. They've added Latavius Murray, Murray and Devonta Freeman, who they signed veteran players. Um, who became free agents. So they have been able to. They're running the ball still better than anybody else in the league. Of course, Lamar Jackson is a big piece of it. And in terms of Greg Roman, he's got a philosophy and you'll, you'll see it 
this week in terms of just the creati creativity at the line of scrimmage, a lot of motion, uses the tight ends a lot. You know, at the end of the game, the Ravens needed one yard on fourth and one. They went with a heavy package. They got, you know, 20 offensive linemen out there on the field. And so he just can dial up some creativity in that run game. They can go heavy and put a ton of offensive linemen on the field. They can try to spread it out. And because of Lamar's ability uh, to carry the football, they can spread it out and still have success running the ball. This year, they've also added an under center option. So much of Lamar's career has been in the shotgun doing that RPO stuff. Uh, which is a heavy diet of what your the Ravens do over the course of a game. But they've added some under center stuff this year. So there's just a lot of options in the run game. And Greg Roman, he he builds one of the best run games in the league. And that's been the case for the Ravens over the past few years. Thirdly, let's talk uh, some Lions offense. That matchup against tight end TJ Hawkinson. Hawkinson still proving to be one of the favorited targets for quarterback Jared Goff back-to-back -back weeks of scoring touchdowns. What does that matchup look like and, and who who will have the opportunity to try to slow Hawkinson down here Sunday? Well, the Ravens have kind of had murderer's row on the tight end front. They opened the season with Darren Waller out in Vegas and they had Travis Kelsey in week two and now here comes TJ Hawkinson. So three straight weeks of some of the best tight ends in the NFL. It's going to be a challenge uh, for this defense. I think the Ravens have used a variety of different approaches on those first two guys. And so I think it'll probably be a similar thing this week. There's been times where they're trying to hit him at the line of scrimmage with the linebackers, knock him off his route. Um, they've also tried some double coverage stuff at times. I would think there that would be an option. You know, Jimmy Smith is a veteran cornerback for the Ravens who's not played that it yet this year as he's dealing with an ankle injury. But he's a big corner. If he's able to play, he's somebody who can match up against the tight end and the Ravens have used him in those spots. We'll see if he's able to play as we go through this week. But I think the Ravens will throw a variety of looks. They'll certainly have some times where they double him over the top with safety help and then also try to throw some linebackers on him and, and, and just kind of mix up that coverage and then also get physical with him. And that's what they did at times with Kelsey. So I don't think it's a one man approach because like those other two guys, Hawkinson's a great player and you got to be creative about how you stop him. But I think that's going to be one of the key pieces in determining what happens with this game on Sunday. Lions are going to have to get creative if they want to stop, of course, quarterback Lamar Jackson and that stellar run game. Garrett, thank you so much for spending some time with me. Uh, can't wait to take on your Ravens and welcome back to the Midwest here. Yeah, for sure. I'm excited. I'm a Midwest guy, Ohio guy. Oh, there's not too many popular Ohio people in uh, Michigan. I understand that, but I'm looking forward to the trip. It should be a great time.